Hello, I made this little <clears throat> mini oscilloscope using an Arduino and a small OLED screen to help out with the problem I was having with my current project and it turned out to be very easy to put together so I thought I would share the sketch and the wiring and stuff so that somebody else um, who might find it useful could give it a try as well. Um, <clears throat> so I'm using an Arduino Uno here um, under the bottom there, it's an Uno, and I have a prototype shield on top, that's not really necessary, it just helps to um, plug things in. And the uh, screen is a 0 0.96 inch 128 by 64 pixel OLED display, it costs about five dollars. So those are two parts you'll need, not very much, uh, and some wires of course. And <clears throat> The wiring is pretty simple. Uh, if you've ever used these screens before, you'll know how to wire those up already. Basically, there's just the um, oops, the ground and the positive voltage. I'm using 5 volts here. It seems to work with 5 volts or 3 volts, this one. And then you have pins 4 and 5 going to SDA and SCL, respectively, on the uh, the signal lines for the screen. And in digital zero, I have the, sorry, analog zero, I have the pin that I'm using as the sensor for my oscilloscope. And between um, digital two and at the moment ground, I have this other um, wire here. And this is just a switch to switch on the uh, triggering that I programmed into the oscilloscope, which I'll show you how that works now. Um, so at the moment we're just looking at whatever signal happens to be on the end of this green wire which is just floating between uh, 0 and about 1 volt at the moment. Kind of weird. As my finger gets closer you can see it gets to 2 volts and then it goes right up to 5 volts. Oh sorry, between you know 0 and 5. Um, and if we plug this into the 3.3 volt regulated uh, pin here, we can see that we have 3.3 volts. So the little tabs, uh, little graph ticks on the left here are um, 1 volt. should have mentioned that to begin with. <clears throat> so the capabilities of this little oscilloscope are not very much. Obviously we can only measure between 0 and 5 volts. And as far as the time scale goes, at the moment we can see a time span of 36 milliseconds in the horizontal axis. Um, so all it's doing is taking a sample from this analog pin, so it's just doing analog read, and it's doing that as fast as it can, um, and then it's putting those in a buffer, and then when it's got enough values to draw on the screen, it draws the screen. So we don't take a sample and draw the screen, take a sample, draw the screen. We can't do that because that's not fast enough. So we just loop as quickly as we can taking some samples and then we draw the screen once the buffer is full. Um, so in actual fact what's going on here is I'm taking every eighth sample and that gives me a time of about 36 milliseconds to cover one screen width. Um, if you take every one sample, or every single sample that is, you can get down to about 16 milliseconds for one screen width. Uh, 16 milliseconds is about a 60th of a second. So that's only 60 hertz for each screen refresh, each screen, uh, each buffer filling. Uh, so that's not very fast. Um, but of course you could get say, I don't know, maybe five or six waves on screen before the waves got too compact so that you couldn't see what they looked like properly. So I'd say you could use this to sample waves of up to about uh, maybe 300 hertz or something. So as far as capabilities go it's not it's nothing special. Um, but it helped me out in my problem that I had and I'll, I'll show you that later on what my problem was. Uh, anyway, so <clears throat> Let's uh, see what the other feature I had was. So at the moment, oops, disconnected the wrong end. This one. 
So we can see here it just jumps up and down between 0 and 5 there. Why does it do that, by the way? I don't understand where this wave is coming from. And it seems to be about 20 millisecond length wave length. So kind of puzzled as to where that comes from. Uh, anyway, so what I have over here with this orange wire is basically just a, a switch to turn on and off the triggering. And all the triggering does is it looks for a point in the wave that is zero. And then it moves along the wave until it finds the next point after that that is not zero. And it uses that as the beginning of the line to draw on the screen. So we can see at the moment the trigger is off and the waveform is sort of scrolling sideways, not very useful. Uh, if I take this and I connect that to positive 5 volts over here, then we can see that the waveform stays still. A lot more useful. If I let go, you can see that uh, this wave also goes down to zero, so we also get this wave to stand still. Um, if no zero point can be found, I think I made it to just not draw anything. Because um, it's not, not very useful to uh, see the wave scrolling still. So I thought that was quite quite neat. It doesn't take too much programming either. Just uh, about 10 lines of code to, to look through that buffer and find the first zero point and then the next non-zero point after it. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> That's about it for the explanation of the oscilloscope itself. Um, and to have a look at why this helped me and what, why I decided to make it, um, I'll have to set up a few other things. So just give me a second. OK, let's look at some more interesting waveforms. <clears throat> um, what I've changed here is instead of using the green wire there, uh, where are we? Uh, I'm taking the ground from here and the analog zero that we were using to read the sampling from before and I've connected that to <clears throat> the ground and the signal pin on my other Arduino here which is outputting a pulse position modulation otherwise known as PPM signal and that is a series of quite short pulses separated by a long pulse and this is used a lot in radio control models to combine uh, multiple streams of um, positions basically when you you know move this control sticks left and right the servo is supposed to move on the on the plane or the car or whatever you're driving um, and you need a, a bunch of wires to connect them all up but if you use PPM you can just have this one single wire to carry all of the signals for basically as many servos and motor controllers as you need uh, I'll put a link in the description to somewhere where you can see a proper oscilloscope um, with an explanation of how PPM works. But anyway, so what we have over here, as you can see, some very short pulses. And they're kind of all over the place at the moment because I have my special um, trigger wires disconnected, so they're not it's not functioning at the moment. Um, and, yep, let me bump that again. Um... And you can see that the voltage is about 3.7 volts high because I'm running this off a 3.7 volt small LiPo battery over there. Um, now I tested this with my flight control that I'm using because I'm going to put this into a quadcopter. And if you check my last video, you'll see this thing here working perfectly with the flight controller board. And the flight controller board is recognizing this PPM output over here just fine and it's 3.7 volts, right? So <clears throat> what I really wanted to do was put a 3.3 volt Arduino into the quadcopter instead of this one. This is a 5 volt Arduino. Uh, so that I could use the 3.3 volt regulated power from that Arduino to power the RF24 module. It seems to run, <laughs> seems to run okay on 3.7 volts actually, but I just didn't want to take too many chances with it flying around uh, in case it hits somebody and something goes wrong and such. Um, so I spent quite a bit of time soldering and making a nice little package of a 
Volt Arduino and a RF24 module. Um, made it look all nice and stuck it on the quadcopter ready to go. The perfect little place for it there. And connected all the electronics up. And the flight controller was not recognizing this PPM signal. So I posted a message in the forums and asking and people said yes, the flight controller should accept 3.3 volt PPM signal, because that's what I thought was the problem, because that was the only difference that I could um, uh, tell. Uh, the only thing I thought that might be different was the voltage in the PPM, because this is 3.7 and the other one would be 3.3. So I decided to set up this oscilloscope to check that the PPM signal was actually working there. Um, so to make this a little bit easier to see, first I'll connect the orange wire that I had before and that will make it so that the waveform only starts on a rise from zero to non-zero. So now we can see that the pulses are sort of in the same place roughly, um, but because we don't have a very long scan distance, a sampling buffer, uh, it's still sort of jumping around a bit. So what I did just now was I also coded in to the Arduino sketch uh, another little check so that when we put pin 3 to digital positive, it will just stop updating the screen. Um, so that's that's one way we can just quickly freeze, freeze that waveform and take a look at it. And I'm trying to freeze it here so that we get all of those... Oops, just about had it. Uh, this is what we want here. <clears throat> we should have 9... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Yes, uh, we have 9 pulses on the screen there. Um, so everything's working great here. And let me just connect this up to the 3.3 volt Arduino. Keep this keep this picture in your mind here, what that pulse looks like. And we'll connect this up to the 3.3 volt Arduino running exactly the same sketch on here. Everything is exactly the same except that it's a 3.3 volt Arduino instead of a 5 volt Arduino. Okay. Okay, now we have the oscilloscope um, sampling thingy connected up to the signal output from the Arduino 3.3 volt Arduino that's on the quadcopter and the ground is on here. Uh, so we can see, yes, this is about 3.3 volts. But what's this? <laughs> the pulses are twice as long. As soon as I saw this, I had to, you know, face palm and shake my head and so on. Because, of course, the 3.3 volt Arduino <coughs> runs at 8 megahertz, and the 5 volt one runs at 16 megahertz. So all I had to do was halve the length of these pulses. That was all. So anyway, it was uh, an interesting few hours spent setting up this oscilloscope, and I hope it's uh, made an interesting video, and I'll put the sketch up and so on. Um, one, thing <coughs> one thing I forgot to mention here was that uh, I changed the sampling length so that now the width of the screen is 16 milliseconds. <coughs> Each one of these pulses here, by the way, is 300 microseconds. The microseconds is getting pretty small. Um, so even though I said before that it wouldn't be very useful for wave wavelengths of more than about 300 hertz, waves, wave frequencies of more, more than about 300 hertz, you can see that it's not that bad. I mean, it doesn't give you such a great display, but you may be able to make use of it for things with rather more higher frequencies than 300 hertz. So, anyway, that problem has been solved. Thanks for watching.